Today I am very happy. Because today my daughter, Sister Rani Maria, is beatified. She is also known as Sister Regina Maria. But before this happiness, a sword crossed through my heart. I am Eliswa, wife of Paili. We lived in a place named Pulu Valley, a small village in Kerala state in India. We were an agricultural family. And we have seven children. Stephen, Miriam, Annie, Varghese, Thresiyama, Celine, and Lucy. We were God-fearing simple people and tried to raise our children on the path of faith. We held all our children in the same love. But along the way, Miriam became very special, a special one for God and for his people. She was born on January 29th, 1954, as our second child. We called her in our home as Mary Cunho, which means Little Mary. From her infancy, we cared to make her understand the importance of prayer. At a young age, she regularly attended Holy Mass. We were happy about her. We had our own dreams about her. But God's plan was quite different. During the final year of her school, Mary felt the call of the Lord to embrace the consecrated life. Her frequent visits to the nearby convent and acquaintance with the Franciscan Clarist nuns drew her to wish to enter the Franciscan Clarist congregation. Initially, we were not ready for that call. We couldn't think of her being torn apart from us. But Miriam's grandmother insisted she should answer the call. On July 3, 1972, Mary started her aspirancy in the Franciscan Clarist Convent, Kidding Ur. On May 1, 1974, after various phases of formation and at almost 20 years of age, she made her first profession in the Franciscan Clarist Congregation under the new name, Ronnie Maria. The first word Rani having the meaning Regina, or Queen. During her hours of work, her favorite prayer often repeated was Jesus. She kept up this habit till her very last breath. In the north part of India, rich landlords have exploited the poor illiterate peoples for hundreds of years. Christian missionaries try hard to educate the poor people of this area and try to release them from being exploited by landlords. As provincial counselor of missions in North India, Sister Infant Mary used to visit the missions and share her experiences with her novices. That sharing conveyed to them the urgency of spreading the good news among millions of illiterate and ignorant people of North India. My Rani was one of the novices of Sister Infant Mary. Hearing the experiences of missionaries, her missionary zeal inflamed. She used to repeat, I too want to go to North India to serve the poor and die for them. India is a land of diversities of religions, languages, and cultures. For greater efficiency in her work as a missionary, she realized she had to master the language of North India. She bid farewell to the mission fields on July 9, 1975 and engaged in language study at the Provincial House of Sisters of Notre Dame, Patna. After her language study, Rani arrived at St. Mary's Convent in the Diocese of Bijnor on December 24, 1975. Bijnor became the cradle of her missionary life. She used to say, I was born and brought up as a missionary in Bijnor. 
She served as a teacher for two years from September 8, 1976 to August 7, 1978. During this period, after teaching hours, she engaged in social ministry. In this way, she could reach out to every little child, every sick and weak person in the interior villages and huts. Ronnie knew that education was going to free people from exploitation, so with the bishop's approval, she started to educate the kids in the village. She went to the village homes and convinced the parents to allow her to teach their children. Initially, she taught the children under the trees. After a few years, she was able to shift the classes to a building. Education was free in that school. When she started, only 20 students came. Today, more than 800 students study there. If such a school was not there, the majority of these students would now be working in agricultural fields and staying illiterate because there are no other schools in the village. After serving in Bijnor, on May 22, 1980, she made her final profession at St. Hormus Church, Angamali. On July 21, 1983, Rani was transferred to Orgadi in the Diocese of Satna and was appointed coordinator of social activities. As in Bijnor, she worked to uplift the poor and downtrodden. During nine years of service there, Sister Rani Maria changed the face of Orgadi. On May 15, 1992, Rani was transferred to Sne Hasiden, Udayanagar. As an experienced social worker, she made a thorough study of the tribals of the villages. She realized they had unconsciously fallen into the debt trap laid cunningly by the tradesmen and landlords of Uthenagur. The poor were not aware of the grants that government had allotted for their socioeconomic development. Rani made them aware of their rights and injustice inflicted on them. Thus, the poor of Uthenagur became active citizens and started to free themselves from bondage under their heartless landowners. As a result of Rani's developmental works in Udenagar, marshy places were converted into agricultural land. The menfolk became engaged in small-scale business. Those capable of going for higher education were given opportunities. She chose a few youngsters and trained them to stand against injustice. She taught them how to help the poor and themselves by getting financial assistance from the government and private banks once a bank manager asked her, why are you struggling for these peasants? Holding in her hand the crucifix hanging from her neck, Sister Rani humbly told the officer, Sir, we have accepted this way of life and come here not because we have no means of livelihood at home, nor is it because our parents have pushed us out of our families. Look, we have accepted this way of life, a life of sacrifice in order to work for Christ in the poor. Gradually, her gentle manners won over the admiration of the bank manager. He began to do the necessary things to help the villagers. Since all this assistance to poor tribals went counter to the vested interests of the unscrupulous moneylenders and social exploiters, Rani became the object of their hatred. Jeevan Singh was one of the major opponents of Rani. He was a gangster in the village. Under his command were more than a hundred criminals. At the time of elections, he used to threaten the villagers and gain their votes for his favorite parties. But in December 1994 Panchayat election, things were not as they were before. A few of the villagers were not ready to obey Jivan Singh because of the light shed by Rani. So Jivan Singh made a fake complaint and jailed those villagers. Rani intervened in the villagers' favor and bailed them out. This incensed Jeevan Singh and his partisans. On February 25, 1995, Rani rose early in the morning because she planned to go to Kerala State. The bus named Kapil arrived in front of the convent. 
Ronnie got into the bus with her handbag. Among the 50 or so passengers were three, seated in different parts of the bus, but united in one thing, the determination to murder Sister Ronnie. Jeevan Singh, the leader of the group, was seated in the back seat of the bus, together with Dharmendra, his bodyguard. The third man was Samundar Singh, a youth of 28, who took his seat near Sister Rani Maria. Jeevan Singh began to insult her, saying, Why have you come here from Kerala? Have you come to convert these poor tribal people to Christianity? We will not allow that. The bus reached a jungle, about 20 kilometers from Udhainagar. Samundar rose from his seat and asked the driver to stop the bus. He got down from the bus and broke a coconut against a rock on the roadside. It was a puja, or sacred rite, offered to their divinities. With pieces of the broken coconut in his hands, he re-entered the bus and distributed them among the passengers. He offered a piece to Rani, but suddenly withdrew it as if to fool her. She asked him, why are you so overjoyed today? Drawing out a knife, he said, just for this, and thrust it into her stomach. Repeatedly, he stabbed her. Deaf to her cries, he dragged her out of the bus and stabbed her to death. The post-mortem registered 40 major injuries besides 14 bruises. Unto the last breath, Ronnie kept on saying, Jesus, Jesus. Police arrested the convicts. Samundar Singh was sentenced to lifetime imprisonment. The other two were freed in the trial. When news of Rani's murder came, I was not at home. At that time, I was at my daughter Teresa's home. My husband and a few of our relatives left to endure, but nobody told me what happened. When I came back home, somebody told me Ronnie had an accident at endure, but I was not told that my daughter was murdered. Only when I heard someone read the newspaper about a particular incident, from that I understood that my daughter was murdered. There was great pain in my heart. A few priests and nuns came to our home to console me. They told me, pray for the repentance of the murderers. That is the wish of Rani. My heart was frozen. I didn't know what to do, but I prayed continuously. There was no anger in my heart, but it filled with sorrow. As a normal person, I should have anger toward the murderers. I should have revenge in my heart for them. But there is only love for them in my heart. I am sure that such a thing is not possible for a human only. I firmly believe it is the work of the Holy Spirit. What I am thinking is that my daughter Rani was praying for me at that time in heaven for my forgiveness towards her murderers. In response to Rani's prayers, the Holy Spirit filled my heart with love for them. The Holy Spirit also blessed Rani's siblings with the gift of forgiveness. We all forgave the murderers and prayed for their repentance. At that time, Samundar Singh was going through even greater agony in the jail. The persons who hired him to do the murder never looked after him, and his wife also left him. Inside, he became more black. Once I am released from jail, I am going to kill the persons who provoked me to murder Sister Rani. This was the decision of Samundar Singh at that time. He thought, my life is ended. No more hope for me. God had quite different plans. God heard our prayers for the repentance of Samundar Singh. God sent a helper. 
That was Father Michael Parade de Gras. He is a priest and quite a unique person. He lives like a sadhu, only wears kavi clothes, a type of holy garment, and walks barefooted. So he is known as Swami Achen. He went to the jail and told Samundar Singh, you have no need to do any revenge for Rani's murder because all the family members of Rani forgive you and your friends. They only need your repentance. But Samundar replied, God is not going to forgive me. I shed the innocent blood of Sister Rani. With a smiling face, Father Michael told him, if you repent and do good things, the Lord Jesus Christ will forgive you. Those words changed the heart of Samundar Singh. He repented and changed his decision to do more murders. My younger daughter, Sister Selmi, also visited Samundar Singh at the jail. On February 2003, I visited him in the jail and kissed his hand. I told him, this is the hand that has on it the blood of my daughter. It is my desire to kiss this hand. Sister Selmi and a few good people tried to bring Samundar Singh out of the jail. By the result of their efforts and the grace of the Lord, his sentence period was reduced. Samundar Singh was released from jail on August 22, 2006. Once he was released from the jail, he came to our home. We received him. prepared a feast for him. We dined together. On that occasion, I proclaimed him as my third son. He returned to his home lighthearted. It is not a coincidence that he visited me again a few hours before my death. It was a plan of God. He gave me the last drops of water. He called me mother mother, mother. He kissed my hand again and again and again. He prayed there for me. After some time, I passed away from this world. He attended my funeral, and he held my coffin like a son. Today he lives in his home as a farmer, in much better peace. He visits every day at the tomb of Rani. Only forgiveness brings happiness. If I hated him, he would now live unhappy, and I die with hate and unhappiness. But only because of forgiveness. Everybody is happy now. Me, my husband, my kids, family, Zamundar Singh. 
and even the entire world is also happy right now because of Rani. My daughter Rani is also happy in heaven. I thank my Lord Jesus Christ for everything. To all of the viewers of Shalom TV throughout the world, I want to encourage you not only to support this amazing media apostolate, but to spread the word to others. We all know how the internet and mass media are polluting the world with the poison of pornography and so much other forms of materialism. This is the source of eternal life, the gospel, and Shalom TV is consecrated to spreading the word of Christ. Thank you. Shalom World, God's own channel.